ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إذا اعتبر العبد الدين كله راه يرجع بجملته إلى الصبر والشكر وذلك لأن الصبر ثلاثة أقسام قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى who himself was the epitome of patience he said if the servant was to look at the religion generally, the whole religion, he would find that its main reference is to patience and being thankful. Being patient when patience is necessary and being thankful for the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, وَذَانِكَ لِيَنَّ الصَّبْرَ ثَلَاثَةَ أَقْسَامِ he said, because patience is three categories. Sabr ala ta'a hatta yaf'aluha. That he should have patience on obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can do it. Because if he didn't have patience, if she didn't have patience, he could not do it. لا يكاد يفعل مأمور به إلا بعد الصبر. A person almost cannot even obey Allah without the patience. Wa musabira and endurance. Wa mujahida and uh, fighting with his enemies, the external enemies and the internal enemies. How many enemies are there, brothers and sisters? How many? How many? One. How many? Five. How many? Five. How many? Four. Barakallah peak. Four. Enemies are four. Enemy number one. Who is he? Nafs. And the nafs. And the nafs be so. The person's own self. Number two. Number two. The one who manipulates the nafs. A shaitan. Naam. Number three. The ones who pretend they are us and they are not us. The the munafiqun. Number four, those who are not in Islam, the people who are not Muslims, the non-Muslims. Every one of them has details on how to deal with them. Naam, this is not the place for that. Notice the non-Muslims are last and not first. How many former Muslims or non-Muslims do we have here? So you all know and you are evidence that you were not dealt with with the sword and the gun and harshness. And you came to sell a fear without somebody being harsh with you. And you came to sell a fear with somebody inviting you to do it to what? To the book and to the sunnah without being harsh with you. You all are witnesses to that. So when you hear that talk, you say, that is not correct. I came to it by the guidance of Allah. And those people who spoke to me, spoke to me and called me to it. And Allah allowed my heart to be guided to it. And it was not as a weapon. And it was not a gun. And it was not a sword. And it wasn't a rock. And the, those people who feel that, usually because they have resistance first. Wa alaikum salam. And this da'wah said that fear made the distinction between what is sunnah and what is bid'ah. And made the distinction between what is guidance and what is balala? The people who accepted Islam, you had no problem making a distinction between yourself and the Christians, did you? Did you? Uh, did you? No. You made the distinction between yourself and Christians, didn't you? You made, a, made a, a distinction. And some people who are not claiming harshness from Salafis were harsh with Christians. Some people protest in front of the churches. Had placards. We we want the we want the things to come down. We don't want the the, the craven images. Used to call it Craig. Hush. 
and foolish with them. And that wasn't the way of Dawah. The way is to call them to the religion and to call their hearts to the oneness of Allah, as they were told, as they were instructed by their messengers of the Lord, and they were sent. They were harsh against the Jews, saying they had felt the religion, and they had this and that, and there was no Holocaust. And he lied about that and made that the centerpiece of the dawah. Is that the centerpiece of dawah to Allah to a job? Is it? No. Yet the same people claiming harshness, that's the way they were with them. And turned them in many cases against the brothers and sisters. Turned them in many cases against the Muslims. The same ones who claimed that the Sallis were being harsh used to take money from their mothers and fathers who were Christians and wouldn't pay them back because they're kufar. You ever heard that nonsense? Nah. That's not how you said if he's got this down. You got it because you did it through knowledge. And you understood that knowledge precedes what? How many, how many actions? How many? All of them. How much speech? All of it. And that was that beauty with alhamdulillah. So, one of the ulama of the Salaf, who said that Salafiyya was the truth, he said it's three, Aqsa. There's three. Sabr ala ta'ati la, so you can do it. And sabr, oh, and he said the sabr on ta'ati la, this sabr is so that you can do it, and based upon how much sabr you have, it is how much you can do of the wajibat. And how much you can perform of the mustahabbat. According to how much what you have? Sabr. According to how you struggle with yourself to do it. Nur Athani, the second one, sabr ala man, ala man hiya anhu, is the sabr not to do the things that have been prohibited by Allah Azza wa Jal. Hatta la yaf'aluhu, so that you will not do it. Don't be the kind of person who says, I know it's haram, but I'm going to do it anyway. And don't be the kind of person who says to himself, what I am doing is going to be enough for me. I know Allah has commanded this thing, but I'm not going to do it because I know what's enough for me. Because I know me. Ever heard that one? I know what I can do and what I can't do. How is that the position of a servant? As a matter of fact, Sheikh Muhammad Aman Jami said that that attitude, that position in the Quran is considered kufrun. Hmm? And he said, listen, in the last one that I talked to Bani Israel, are you going to believe in some of the book and reject the other part? Are you going to be so brazen that you're going to believe in part of the book and you're going to reject part? Whoever thinks he can do that, there's no jaza for him in his dunya. Humiliation. Humiliation. The Muslim brother and sister humiliated. They say it's a wonderful deen, but they had humiliation is what they get back. They say it's the most beautiful deen, but they don't want but part of it. You know what that is, brothers and sisters? That is saying that the slave knows what's sufficient and he denies that Allah is sufficient for him. If he wasn't denying that Allah was sufficient for him and that Allah was sufficient for her, she would never deny an order of his, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would never deny a command from Allah, as well as except that he's saying he knows better what's sufficient. La ibadullah. And so you find people coming to the masajid and they're very pious in front of Allah as of a gentleman. Because they think that ibadah is something which is limited to time and temporary. 
And so they leave the Ibadah and turn around and, and they are harsh. They cheat. They lie to the other slaves. They oppress the other slaves. Why? Because they the limited idea about Ibadah, especially those of us who have the ability to learn, will not learn, some because of their age. There's some cut off, you know, for age. When you reach the age of 50, stop learning. This is not retirement from a job. Now what I want is my appreciation. Where's my medal? Where's my gold watch for everything I've done for the religion? You know how much I've done for the religion? La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. How is that? Since when? You were allowed, you were guided, it was of be love. And you continue to do that hatta, yatika, and yaqeen, barakallahu fiq shu, there's beauty. I'm saying part, my brothers are saying the other part. Wa'abudallah, hatta yatika, yaqeen. Worship Allah until yaqeen comes. This side, what does yaqeen in the verse mean? What, what did Yaqeen in the verse mean? What did you say, sir? Huh? Death. 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 Until you die. Because you understood that this is a temporary existence. And it's only a bridge to the hereafter. And you only have one chance at it. And who makes a mistake here? could ruin his chances forever. Is that not right? Who makes a mistake here could ruin his chances forever. And so that brother and sister who has control over little ones, lets them know, son, you cannot, my young daughter, you cannot make a mistake here that will ruin your chance forever. So I will do everything I can to stand between you and something harming you. Just like I wouldn't let a fire burn you in a house. I would not let you drown in a tub. I wouldn't let you take an overdose of pills. I'm not going to allow the people who I know want to trap you in unbelief. Let them do that. And I will never throw my hands back and say, I'm done with you all. Until when? Until death. Or were you witnesses when death approached Yaqub? When he said to his sons, he called his sons. The signs of death were approaching him, and he said, I want to have, as Sheikh Ibn Saadi said, I want to have the happiness of my eyes. And the happiness of eyes come from children, don't they? It's one of the quarters of Ain, from the wife and from the child, man. He said, I want to know. What you will worship after I die. What they say, Na'budu ilahak. Don't worry, Abu. We're going to worship your Lord. We're going to be firm in the religion. He didn't say, tell me what degrees you have, how many houses you own, how many cars have you got. Tell me what you will worship. That will will lighten my burden. Because death has what for some people? It has what? Difficulty. Death has difficulty. Death is difficult. Now, we read about it now. It's difficult. So he asks, before his eyes closed the last time, he no longer sees them. Main question, what would you worship after me? And they assured him they would stay firm upon the religion. Men, the sign of a believing man is that he grabs hold of his children and he strives to keep them firm upon the religion. sign of a believing woman is that she grabs hold of her children and does her best with all affection she has it within her because the first food comes from her because you were the first house. As a matter of fact, as soon as the child comes down your uh, breath canal, 
He takes a mouthful of bacteria, and the way he digests his food the rest of his life depends on your health. It depends on you. It's called gut flora. He swallows what you have there, and, it, and you become him. The first food is you, mom. First milk is you, mom. Don't refuse to breastfeed the children. Talking about it hurts to do so. Pain is a way to get rid of sin. Don't refuse to breastfeed children and give them a formula. What's the formula? A formula of what? Here's some formula. Allah placed it in my body. I have all the vitamins. I've got the minerals. Even got some of the things that are, that are better than vaccinations in my body. And because I'm too busy, here's some inframeal. No, sisters. Your universal role is mammy. Mammy. Short for what? Mammal. Short for what? Mammary gland. So don't look for somebody else to be your man. Look for somebody else, to, some other child to be the child's mammy. You be his mammy. You hold him, bond with him, take care of him or her, talk to him. Tell him from that time how much you love him. Show him. Now don't run from the field. And fathers, hold on to your role as defender and provider of education and protection, and don't run away. So the sheikh said, Hatta, you have to stay away from what Allah made haram. Hatta, la yaf'alu, so you won't do it. In the nafs, because the soul has inclinations that are evil. What tazina shaitan, and shaitan will come with the soul with this. Um, uh, what's it called, impression or, or, or tezin, he will beautify evil so the soul will fall into a trap. And you will meet evil companions. All of them, and they will all invite you to do sin. How many? A person's own inclinations. Shaitan. Tezin of shaitan. Then evil companions. Who will get in there and you say, you don't have to believe that. Don't do that. Like you young ones. You shabab. Be careful of Qur'an and soup. And the pretending Muslims. The pretending celebrities who pretend that they're good people. And the pretending celebrities who want to call the name of we believe in Allah. Hit it. Give me the beat. We believe in Allah. Give me the beat. It's not just words, youngsters. Watch out for Qur'an is soup. Watch out for the psychological, meaning spiritual, tricks that they play on you. Like you sitting in front of a movie, if you do that on the down low, and you find yourself crying at what you know is something imaginary. You've just been had. Your soul has been taken over. Like these brothers used to cry out at the Lion King. Well, <laughs> They're not going to tell you. <laughs> when Mufasa got, Mufasa got killed. <laughs> Big grown man, they're not going to tell you what happened. And that, that's a hostile takeover. That's a spiritual takeover. Just for a couple of hours, they got you. Click, let's turn it on. Now suddenly you're involved in something you know is, is false. It has a name. It's called, it's called uh, a catharsis. It's a purge of your soul and exchanging your soul for what the writer wants from you. Watch out for the cartoons. What's it called? Anime? With the Japanese who Allah visits regularly. Regularly with what? Harm. They get, they get the fire. They get radioactivity because they're busy. You say you don't like them. I don't like Chinese people. I don't like Chinese people. Yeah, right, right, right. But who, ha, who, ha, every, who, ha, who, ha. I don't like Chinese people, right? You don't like them. But here you are, some of you wanting to beat them. You want to run up a building and do a flip. Where'd you get that from? That was from what the sensei, you watch, huh? 
That was from him. Oh, you don't like them, but, but, but you're having a takeover. It's a takeover. And they're passing their shit to you. Passing their shit to you with a promise that there's something good for you in it. Your book has everything in it. Your Quran has everything in it. You don't need them. Shape, get in shape. Your prophet suggested doing what? Running? Swimming? Didn't say black man don't swim or white man do swim. Swimming. Riding. Shooting. So that you can be sharp and be in shape. So, wait, sit down. So the sheikh said, watch out for the Qurna Su Ta'mud bin Ma'asiya. So you will follow it. But be hasbi quwwat to sabr. So as strong, according to the strength of your sabr, your kun talquhu laha. You will be able to leave that evil according to your patience. Call it by the sadaf. Some of our sadaf said, a'mal al-dar. Yaf'aluha a'mal al-dir. Yaf'aluha al-bar wal-fajr. Good deeds are done by both good people and corrupt people. وَلَا يُقَدِّرْ عَلَى تَلْكِ الْمَعَاسِ إِلَى صُدِّيقِ But nobody can leave sin except a truthful person. Nor a thaddis. The third type. صَبْرْ عَلَى مَا يُصِيبُهُ بِغَيْرِ اِخْتِيَارِهِ مِنَ النَّصَائِبَ هِيَ النُّعَانِ The patience of affliction that he did not choose. And it's two types. Here, when you come to the third type, third category of sabr, the sheikh said that type is of two types, not one. The first type of a musibah, affliction, that afflicts people without their choice. Nur, ikhtiyar al la The type in which there's no choice in it. Ka'amrad, like being sick, and other than that. Min al nusaiba samawiya, from what you know was in the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal, and you know human beings weren't involved in it. Fahabi, yes, hell of sabra piha. This is easy to accept. I'm sick. We say, qadr Allah wa ma We know that a person didn't make us sick. It was in the qadr that I become ill. My, my diabetes. Uh, the fact that I, you know, I have gout. The fact that whatever I have, qadr Allah wa ma because the slave can see in that. He can see in his illness. The fact that his house, some of it burned down. The fact that some of it fell down, he can see the qadda of Allah. He can see the, 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 uh, the, the fate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed. And he can see the qadri. He can see the qadr. He can see what he has ordained in this. People had nothing to do with it. He, he's patient. He's patient. Either he's forced to be patient with it, or he chooses to be patient with it. But either one, he can be patient with it. If Allah opens his heart to understand the benefit, the benefit of what happened to him, if he can see the blessing of it and the kindness of Allah in the affliction that he, that he had, he goes to another level. He leaves just being, being, being patient. He thanks Allah. If he can understand the kindness involved in what happened to him, if he can understand the benefit that he got from the affliction, he thanks Allah as well for it. And he, became, he becomes content with it. And so this affliction for that person who understands now why or the good in the affliction, it becomes a ni'mah for him. It is now a blessing for him. His affliction now becomes a blessing. And so his heart and his tongue, they say, Labbi, a'ini ala dhikrika wa shukrika. Which the Messenger of Allah told one of the young companions, For that, don't forget to say at the end of every salah, Allahumma, a'ini ala dhikrika wa shukrika 
خشني عبادتك او الله help me to remember you and to thank you and the goodness of worshiping you وهذا يقوي ويضعف this type of attitude this realization is strengthened or is weak according to how well the servant loves Allah or his weakness of his love for Allah the second type and you hustle that who be fair the nas be mad he or if he or nefse because of the involvement of people he suffered an affliction in his wealth his honor or his self because of the involvement of Bani Adam it happened it didn't just happen Bani Adam was involved have a more yes I been suffered I had did that the Sheikh said it's very difficult rahimallah it's very difficult to overlook it then the nafs tashashar and mu'zidaha because the soul can feel the harm that was caused and hates to be overcome or beaten by someone else. And so he seeks what? Revenge. Revenge. And revenge is from anger. Anger, there was no, if there was no revenge or the need for revenge, there would be no anger. And to tell about intiqam, but I ask for Allah have a more illa and biya. The Sheikh said the first people who are able to take that type of affliction given by people with prophets, messengers, wasadikuna, and those who really believe in the message. What can the Nabi and the Prophet have said? Either Udi or Yaqul. And when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was harmed, he would say. يَرْحَبُ اللَّهُ مُوسَى لَقَدْ أُوذِيَ بِأَكْثَرِ مِنْ هَذَا فَصَبَقْ Allah had mercy on Moses. He was harmed by more than this, and he had patience. وَأَخْبَرَ عَنْ نَبِيَّ مِنْ أَنْبِيَاءَ أَنْهُ ضَرَبَهُ قَوْمَهُ فَجَعْلَ يَقُولُ And another messenger, another prophet, he was harmed. He was hit by his people, and he said, اللَّهُمَّ أَغْفِرْ لِقَوْمِ فَإِنْهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know what they do in this thing they've done. وَقَدْ رُوِيَ عَنْهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ أَنْهُ جَارَ لَهُ هَذَا مَعَ قَوْمِهِ That he also was struck by some of his people. And you know he was harmed by the people. فَجَعْلِ يَقُولْ مِتَّ دَارِ He said something similar to this. فَجَمْعَ فِي هَذَا فَذَافُ أُمُورُ So in this, three situations, three affairs happen. الْعَفُ Person overlooks, forgives them. What is tilghfanahum? And ask Allah to forgive them. Wa i'tidhar anhum. And he excuses them because they didn't know better. Wa hab al mu'a min al sabr. Aqibatuhu nasr wal izz. This type of patience grants to people aid and grants to them integrity and honor. This type of patience grants to them what? Aid and gives them integrity and honor. Al-Izzu. Wal-Surur. It gives them happiness. Wal-Amdi wal-Quwa fi dati Allah. And in the way of Allah, it gives them happiness. It gives them security of Allah as a wajal and strength. And also does what? Ziyad al-Muhabbat Allah. It gives them more of the love of Allah. Wal-Muhabbat al-Nas lahu. And Allah makes people love the person. Allah makes people love the people. Love the person for that. So this is something people want love. People want to be loved. It's a major complaint. It's a major complaint. You find these, some of the non-Muslims who have millions of dollars. You know, I, I, I haven't gotten the kind of respect that, I, that, I, that I've wanted over the years. He got houses, he got cars, he got boats. He's still complaining, you know, I haven't gotten the kind of respect that I've wanted over the years. What? It's a problem. Now, because, because love is what kind of affair? From what part of the body? And who was the one who controls that? 
Allah Azza wa Jal. He controls it. So Allah increases love for him and the people love him. It also makes an increase of knowledge. Well, you have to call Allah Ta'ala. And for this reason, Allah said in the Quran, وَجَعَنَّا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُنْقِنُونَ And we have placed from them imams. They are guided by our affair because they had patience. وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُنْقِنُونَ And they were certain of our ayat. فَالصَّبْرُ الْيَقِينَ يُنَالْ إِمَامَةَ فِي الدِّينَ Being patient and having certainty Brings a person imam of the deen. Helps him be one of the leaders of the religion. And so it added to this patience, the strength of certainty, the strength of faith. And the, and the person develops to have degrees of happiness. Because of the favor of Allah. And Allah's favor, Allah's preference, he gives it to who? Who he wills. He wills. We don't decide, barakallahu fee. What do you have that call Allah Ta'ala? Idfa' bil latihiya ahsan. Defend yourself with that which is better. Be the ladi bayna ka wa bayna huwa da'watun ka anu waliyum hameem. Wa mayla qaha. Idfa' defend yourself with that which is better. And if you do it that way, the one between which you and him was enmity, it would be like you are close friends. For none can get this. Yani. Who can none can get this? Al A'mal Saliha. None can do these righteous deeds. Mithl Af wa Subh. Like forgiving and overlooking. None can do this. Illa Ladina Sabaru. Except those who have patience. For Mayulakaha. And none can do this except the one whose portion is going to be great from Allah. In this world, with integrity, in the next world, paradise. Brothers and sisters, be kind to your children. We're talking about grown people. Some of us don't have patience with infants and toddlers and youngsters between the age of, 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 of small children to the age of 10, some of us do not have patience. And we take what they do as an annoyance, and sometimes without thinking, we assault them with our hands. We hit them, some of us. We beat them, some of us. We beat them with objects, some of us. We beat them with our hands, some of us. We beat them with straps, some of us. I'm talking about little children. And you know the society we come from to the fact that it happens, to have the law had to step in, governments had to step in and prevent this kind of treatment. From the same people who claim that they have been oppressed over the years, they oppress children. Don't be one of those parents, anybody don't want. Don't scream! at everything they do, and then complain that people in the khutbah scream when they give the khutbah. <laughs> You're a screamer and complain about the screamer. May Allah preserve her. The daughter of Sheikh Mukbil said that every child is not alike. Some children you cannot yell at. And all it does, if you yell at them, this means that you and I have to analyze them. We have to understand them and know them. If you yell at them, it increases their stubbornness because they don't like the yelling. Other children, you have to step up and be more stern with them. But it cannot go beyond what's reasonable. I've hit you with my little belt. And that has not worked. So I'm going to hit you with my thicker belt. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to hit you with this wire from the cord. And I hope that you all are not still beating your children with these electric cords. You're laughing. I'm not. 
I'm not. I'm not. It's a beautiful communities that we have that people want the dean of Islam. Like an al-bayt to yakshif ala rajul. What's the house do? House exposes a man. House exposes a man. Master doesn't expose a man. The house does. The children do. Wife does. None can get this except those who are going to paradise. Well, the Shaykh says, what will help us to have this type of sabr? What type? The type where we don't seek revenge on people, other believers, because they did something that afflicted us. He said, what will help us with this type of sabr? Sheikh Ruthaymin said, not in all cases do you do this. You do it when it brings islah between you and others. As for a well-known wrongdoer, a well-known and habitual wrongdoer, he said, take your right from him. Because being good to him is shown that it increases his evil. But this is for the people who, it won't increase their evil. Ahadaha, yashhadu anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khaliqu af'ad al-ibad. Where do we start? Start with aqeedah. What helps the sabr? The proper aqeedah. And yashhad anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khaliqu af'ad al-ibad. Harrakahum wa sakanatahum wa irradatahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who was the creator of the servants and their movements when they're, and when they're quiet and all their desires. Sah? Correct? Is that correct? Now. فَمَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ فَمَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ كَانْ فَمَا لَمْ يَشَاءَ لَمْ يَكُونَ So what Allah wills happens. What He does not will does not happen. فَلَا يَتَحَرَّكْ فِي الْعَالَمِ الْعَالَوِي وَالسَّفْرِ ضَرَّ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِي Not an atom on earth or in the heavens can move except by his permission and, his, and what he wills. وَالْعِبَادْ آلَ The servant is only a tool. The servant was only a means. فَانْظُرْ إِلَى الَّذِي صَلَطَهُمْ عَلَيْكَ Look at the one who allowed the servant to overcome you. Don't look at the servant. Look to the one who, Allah, who let it happen. Who without his permission it couldn't have happened. Don't look at what they did to you. Sheikh said you will rest from these conditions. You will rest from ham. Issue anxiety. And you will rest from ham. Despondency. And you will rest from huzn. Depression and sadness. What is ham? Anxiety about what time about what time frame? Future events. You will rest from gum. Gum is despondency when? Here and now. Uncomfortable because this person did this. They did this to me. Now and huzin in what time frame? The past. He said, You rest from that. Turn to Allah as a Fanny. And yesh had the Look at your own sin. Allah let them do what they did to you because of your sin. And whatever you suffer of affliction is because of what your hands did, and Allah has forgiven much. For either Shahid al Abdu. And the Jamia may not have been a crew, but be Sebabi he the movie. If he looks at the fact that everything he, he gets that is distasteful to him, that he hates, is because of his sin, but what he do? Eshtarala be toba, what is still far men of the movie that you saw to him. He will get himself busy with toba, he'll make toba. What is the far? He'd ask Allah to forgive him from sin. 
then let them do what they did to him. Why them be him away from their sin? Well, lonely him and not blaming them. Well, what key I be him and waiting for an opportunity to attack them? He said, he'll come away from that. He'll get busy with what? Tawbah. The stuff and he'll leave the he'll leave the servants alone on what they did. He'll first get busy with his first enemy, which is who? Himself. He'll get busy with him. Either the either Adohum Wala Yamja in a Nasihi bit alone when it's the Bob Fatnam and the Masiba the Hum Musiba the Hakikiya. If you see this person, this people. That, that they fall on the people, that they attack the people, and they harm the people, and they blame the people, and they don't ever include themselves in the process of what happened to themselves, and they don't ever blame their own self, and they never make any end of ask forgiveness, them. understand that he has a real affliction. He has affliction in a real in a, yet in real time. We the tab I was talking about with Carter, but if he makes Toba and asks a lot to forgive him and says, this is because of my sin. It then becomes for him a ni'mah. What is a ni'mah? It becomes a blessing for him, a favor for him. If he can start with himself and look at himself. Do I have to stand up? Are you all all right? Would you like to stand up? Would you like to stand up? Would you like to stand up? No, they, they're ashamed. People said, no. Nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's you. No, I'm just saying to help, to help the blood circulate. I'm good, but I'm, I'm up here. I'm doing this. I see people going. If I see one of you, look at your watch one time. Once. It's over. <laughs> or, or look at your phone. Or look at your phone one time. <laughs> it's over. Or she says, on. قال علي نبي طالب رضي الله عنه كلمة جواهر كلام. He said very beautiful words. لا يرجون عبد إلا رب. A slave should not hope except in his Lord. ولا يخافن عبد إلا ذنبه. And he should only fear his sin. He should hope in his Lord. But he really should fear his own sin. وَالرَّوْهُ عَنْهُ وَعَنْ غَيْرِهِ Reported upon Ali ibn Talib and others, مَا نَزَلَ بِلَاءٌ إِلَّا بِالْدَنْبِ That affliction only comes to people because of sin. وَلَا رَفْعَ إِلَّا بِالْتَوْبَ And it is not raised except for Tawbah. What else may help us with this? You can find a chair? There's some chairs here. Good chair. There's chairs. Brother Lou. Ahlan bi shabab. An yashhad al abd husna al thawab al adi wa'ad Allahu liman al'afa wa sabara. That this person will, is a witness to what? He witnesses the great reward to a person who overlooks and has patience. Kama qala ta'ala. وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٌ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلَهَا فَمَنْ عَافَ وَأَصْلَحْ فَأَجْرُهُ عَوَ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ The recompense for an evil is an evil like it. So whoever forgives and reconciles, then his, his reward is with Allah. Surely he does not love the oppressors. Since people with respect to retaliation are three types. The oppressor who takes more than what he deserves to take. The balanced individual who takes only that which he deserves to take by his rights. And the one who does good, who forgives and forgets what he deserves. Allah mentions three types in this verse. The first part of the verse refers to the balanced ones. The middle part refers to those who will outdo others in good deeds. And the last part refers to oppressors. In no la you should This is about what? Retaliation. One should also contemplate the call of the caller. On the day of judgment, on the resurrection, rise the one whose reward is due to Allah. No one would rise except the one who forgives and reconciles. 
if he then contemplates on the fact that he may lose out on his reward by seeking revenge and retribution, it becomes easier for him to observe patience and forgive. The one who, in retaliation, he's an oppressor. He takes more than is due to him. This is Lun. The body. He gets fired from a job, he shoots and kills the employer. In his mind, that's what is deserved by that. The one who only takes his balance, he only takes what is his right to take. He's owed five dollars, he takes back five. He doesn't take back his five dollars, spread evil about the person, start talking bad about the person all over the place. He owed him five dollars and he give it back on time. Now again, let's be talking about habitual people who do this kind of wrong continuously. Who, who do this kind of wrong continuously. This person is different. To, rep to, to, not, to back off from this kind of person is not going to bring good because a person doesn't recognize that good. And just to, just to make a mention, it doesn't exactly fit here, but I would like to make mention to those people, the brothers who are acting as Walid sisters, to get married. You have to be patient in that job and you have to look very closely at the suitors and you have to go into their backgrounds so that you do not rush and marry a lady to someone who has a record of harming other women, perhaps. And sisters, you have to be patient when getting married and let the wali do his job and don't duck him because he's taking too long because he doesn't want trouble for you in your marriage. And when we say that we mean that. What does it mean? Baraka. And? And whatever comes between you to be good. What is a baraka? Khair kathir. First thing. It's much good. Naam? Khair kathir sabitun. It's much good and it has longevity. It has much good, a baraka has much good, and has longevity. And the Messenger of Allah also put that dua at when marriages for the sisters so you understand and you can defend yourself against those who say that Islam is not just the women. He placed that dua because the Arabs used to have a saying when they got married, it was something like, have a long life and plenty of sons. And he changed it. Not just men, not just to have boys, but whatever you have between you, boys or girls, may it be good. So let the wali take his time. I'm going to be nice. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the benefits of being older. I mean, uh, um, so the wali should take his time look into this man's background don't rush and sisters you should let him take his time and don't go online and meet somebody that you don't know and they come running up I want to get married that's not, how it, that's not how it goes we are not exceptions to the sharia we are followers of it don't make yourself an exception just trying to make ourselves exceptions to the Sharia may come from some, some, some old um, uh, cultivation that we had in which everybody is an exception to the rule. He's an exception to the rule because, you know, he had a hardship when he was coming up. This one's an exception to the rule, you know, because they was poor. He's an exception to the rule, you know, because uh, uh, one didn't love him. And before you know it, we got a bunch of exceptions to the rule, but getting that the justice in Islam is that it covers everybody. And if there's going to be an exception, it is noted in the Kitab. If there's an exception, where is it noted? In the Sunnah. Accept these. The beautiful justice in the religion is that it's for everyone. Black doesn't make you an exception. American doesn't make you exceptions. 
White doesn't make you exceptions. Being a Pakistani doesn't make you an exception. No one is an exception. The rules are for everybody, and that's the beauty of it. Don't go hunting for exceptions to try to find a loophole and say, you know, this is going to be enough for me. Here again, the same the point the Sheikh made. The human rights are the rights of the Sharia, and they have been given by Allah Azza wa Jal, and given by his messenger. So don't try to make yourself an exception to it and wind up with some kind of hardship. One should also contemplate the call of the caller and that he may lose out if he tries to take revenge. Rabia, what else will help? And yes, had and who either Afa or Ahsan or Rafu Dari come in Masalamat or Kalt, the Ihwanihi, when the Kaihi min and the Rish, while Gil, what Talab in Tikam, where Rada Shur, where Hassala whom in Halawa did Af, Mayazid did that he. ومنافعة تهي عاجلا وآجلا على منفع حاصل له بالانتقام أضعافا مضاعفة ويدخل في قولي تعالى والله يحب المحسنين فيص فيصير محب محب محبوب لله ويصير حاله حال من أخذ منه الدراهم فعود عنها وفاء من دنانير فحين إذن يفرح بما من الله عليه أعظم ما يكون فرحا one should realize that if he forgives and does good in return, it gives him a sense of open-heartedness toward his brothers and cleans his heart of treachery and malice, the desire for revenge and desiring ill for others. Because someone trying to, trying to take revenge is malice, treachery. Brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, you have an argument. Forgive, forgive. First step in big arguments that makes the argument continue is trying to find the source of blame. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. How long does that go on? How long? How long? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. <laughs> Drop it because people are not inclined to take the blame. Your husband's not going to take the blame. He's trying to blame him. He says, that may be true that he come with a three-letter word, but. And that may be true, but. Or you say, that may be true, but. What do you mean, but? But, here's, here's that but, and then the other but is going to come along. Here's this but. No. Forget it. Drop it. And the malice. Don't wait until your wife is happy. And then drop some really ugly stuff on her to make her unhappy. That's that's a treachery. Just the same thing. She fills you a meal. She cleaned it. She she fixed it for you and put it in front of you. I'm sorry. She's looking for appreciation. Everybody wants love. Looking for your appreciation, not for you to. Oh yeah. Oh now now she want me to uh, to show appreciation. I'm gonna get it right. Wait, wait, I'm gonna get it right now. Watch this. Now I'm going to get him. It would, be, it would be okay if you didn't burn the onions. It would be okay if you didn't, uh, um, yeah, this meal is good, but what about all that stuff you left dirty up there? Sisters, you two, come in the house happy. First of all, don't respond with happiness. I'm not going to be happy because you're happy. You're not gonna, your happy not going to control my happiness. I got something for you, bro. Here it comes. I'm going to let you have it now. You forgot to take out the garbage, man. Because you forgot to take out the garbage, this happened. So why don't you just take it out now? Oof. Okay, I forgot. All right. Don't wait. Don't lay in wait. Don't lay in wait. Forgive. Don't do that. Drop it. Forgive it. If you're able to do that. Once you realize that if he forgives and does good in return, it gives him a sense of open heartedness toward his brothers, cleans his heart of treachery and malice. The desire to revenge and desiring ill for others. He tastes the sweetness of forgiving, which only increases and multiplies his joy and gain, be it in the near or distant future. Over any gain he might attain through revenge, he is thereby included in Allah's saying, and Allah loves the doers of good, the meaning of which is, and thus becomes beloved to Allah. He is akin to a person to whom only one dirham was given, 
Yet, he was recompensed with thousands of dinars. He then becomes overjoyed with what Allah has bestowed upon him. One should know that no one takes revenge for himself except that he inherits by it a sense of dishonor. But if he were to forgive, Allah would have honored him. This is what the most truthful person confirmed as he said, Allah does not increase a man by his actions of forgiveness except in honor. The honor achieved through forgiving becomes more beloved and of a greater benefit to him of a greater, a greater benefit to him than the honor received through revenge. For the latter may be outwardly be honorable, inwardly though it is weak and humiliating. Whereas forgiveness may inwardly be humiliating, inwardly be humiliating, but it does yield honor internally, externally. And what it means is that outwardly it looks humiliating. The person who forgives doesn't try to re take revenge. In other words, somebody thinks that that's weakness of some people because they don't try to avenge. But inwardly it gives a person strength not to do that. Sadness, what will help a person? Wahiyah min aadam fawaih an yashhad an the jazaa min jins and amal wa innu nafsuhu baadam mizna wa in min aafa an al nas aafa Allahu anhu wa min ghafra ghafra Allahu lahu fa ida shahid an aafuhu anhum wa sathahu wa ihsanuhu ma asatihim ilay sabab li an yajziyahu Allahu kadarik min jins amalhi fa yaafu anhu wa yasfah ويحسن إليه على ذنوبه سهل عليه عفوه وصبره ويكفي العاقل هذا الفائد. This is this is from the greatest of benefits. It is for one to realize that the recompense of an evil deed is its like, and that he himself is an oppressor and a sinner, and that the one who forgives people, Allah in turn forgives him. And whoever pardons them, Allah in turn pardons him. When one realizes that the fact that he forgives and pardons them, and furthermore does good to them, step two, this is the Islah part, he does good to them, despite, of the, despite the ill treatment, it is a cause for Allah repaying him in the light by forgiving and pardoning him. And furthermore, doing good to him despite his sins. It becomes easier for him, when he remembers this, to then forgive and observe patience. This benefit alone will suffice any intelligent person. And he knows that if he has been able to do it in the way of 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 the way ما لا يمكن استدراكه لعل هذا يكون أعظم عليه من مصيبة التي نالته من جه من من جهتهم فإذا عافى وصفح فرغ قلبه وجسمه من مصالحه التي هي أهم عنده من الانتقام. One should know that if one busies himself with revenge and retribution. He wastes his own time, and his heart falls into confusion. He thereby misses out on many benefits that he may never be able to achieve again. And perhaps this becomes a greater calamity for him than whatever evil that may have befallen him due to men. Yet, if he forgives and pardons, his heart and limbs are free to achieve his own benefits that are of greater importance to him than revenge. Ibn Qadam al-Maqtisi once said that this being seeking revenge, being jealous and seeking revenge, that if a person cannot get the revenge, it makes him sick. It sickens him. Because every time he hears of the success of the one he wants revenge for, it makes him sick. It depresses him further. He can't get to him, and he's being raised anyway. He can't hit at him, 
and he or she is achieving more benefits. And now I really hate him even more. It makes a person sick for that to happen to him. Don't do it. Relieve ourselves from that. Please yourselves hmm? with good. Ihras ala mayan back. But stand billahi what attaches. Focus on what brings good to you. Focus on goodness. Never mind what the others are doing. Focus on goodness. Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala said, you will see a change in the Muslim world if we understand a few things. One, according to knowledge, there's only two kinds of people in the whole Muslim community. Who are they? Right. Al-Alam That's it. According to knowledge. There's a scholar and a non-scholar. Each one has a wajib that's his responsibility to do. To do. What's the wajib of the non-scholar? Ah, let's ask them. What's the wajib upon the scholar? To to answer. According to his capability. Khalas. Now, priority. What's the priority of every man? It's, uh, that's right. The priority of every man is to ask that scholar, Ya Sheikh, I am doing this. Ya Sheikh, I buy like this. Ya Sheikh, I sell like this. Ya Sheikh, I have treated my family like this. Ya Sheikh, me and my child get along like this. Ya Sheikh, this is what's afflicting me and my life. No smoke screen about Fulana, 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 but that person. Sheikh al Abani said, because under that person's ability is himself and everybody under his responsibility, if he would take care of that, which he has been actually commanded to take care of, if everyone would do that, then what would happen? You'd have a change. Because under that man's hand is the ability to change things. Now, in his hand, it's in, uh, it's in uh, Tawheed Awal and Yadu Aqid Islam. Is in his hand is his piece of the ummah, his government in his house, the state of his affair, not the state of Bulan's affair. Yes, government should ask about the governments. That's their affair, but it's not the affair of every person. What's under that person's direct affair is what? Is his people, his family is under his affair. So unfortunately, because we come from a society in which social justice is always at the forefront. We can't get a rest from the social justice. We concern ourselves with the social justice for other people. We are all tied up in their social justice, their social justice. Some of the same people tied up with their social justice don't give justice to the people they're supposed to give justice to. Who are they supposed to give it to? Family. They don't give justice to their family. They're busy with the justice of everybody else. That's the cultivation of people who are misled astray. They're misguided. And it won't happen. Why can't it happen? Sheikh Saudi Ali Sheikh said you cannot free someone else because of that little aspect that a human being has. What is it? Who knows? Hawa. Hawa. A person's own vain desire doesn't let him free somebody more than him. Unless it's his boy. Unless it's his own son, his own child. These people claiming to free somebody and they're working to the free pop, get people marching the street. They're going to free them and free them. No, they're not. No, they're not. It's a bottom line. There's something in the pocket or something in the fame or something in the position or something in the presidency. They're not telling the truth. Because of how I. Because of how I. It's not the truth. And so every one of these people you see claim to be freedom fighters and freedom lovers, they wind up rich. How sad. <laughs> wealthy. Wealthy than the people they're trying to help. Why is that? Why is that? How? Don't make ourselves exceptions to what we already have. Don't make yourself an exception to the rule. Let anybody tell you you're an exception. It's a lie. It applies to all of us. The rules apply to all of us. The messenger is the messenger to all of us who does not recognize him as the main manager of knowledge on how to do this religion is going to fail. 
miserably. فَيَحْتَلُ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ and يُصِيبُهُمْ فِئْنَةِ or يُصِيبُهُمْ عَذَابُ الْأَلِيمِ that everyone who de- denies he is the one with the order and refuses to follow his order, يُصِيبُهُمْ فِئْنَةِ they're going to have fitna. Where? هُنَا this life. وَيُصِيبُهُمْ عَذَابُ الْأَلِيمِ and they're going to fall under the punishment of others. Where? First, here. One should realize that his revenge, retribution, and championing the cause of oneself is only that. He's championing his own cause. Whereas the messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, never took revenge for himself. Whoever the non-Muslim and reads it about him, it must amaze them. It must amaze them about him so long time. They never, for his own self, never did. If the, if the greatest of Allah's creation, the most honorable of them in Allah's sight, did not seek revenge for himself, despite the fact that harming him is in fact harming Allah, knowing that many religious rites are linked to this topic, knowing that his self is the most noble, the purest and most righteous of all, and the furthest from all bad character, and the closest to all good character, yet despite this, he never sought revenge for himself. How, how can then any of us seek revenge for himself while being well aware of ourselves and all the evil and faults that exist in us? In fact, a person who knows his true value does not consider himself worthy of taking revenge if he really knew himself. For him, his self does not hold enough value to champion its cause. If one is harmed for doing an act for the sake of Allah, for doing what he has been ordered to do or ordered to abstain from, it becomes incumbent on him to, to observe patience. It is not for him to seek revenge because since he has been harmed for Allah's sake, his reward remains with Allah. For this reason, when the fighters in the path of Allah sacrifice their blood and wealth, none of that is insured. Rather, Allah has purchased from them their lives and their wealth. Therefore, it is upon Allah, not the creation, to pay the price. And if someone demands the price from the people, Allah will have no price to pay for him. For whoever is harmed for Allah's sake, it is for Allah to recompense him with good. Yet if one is harmed due to some calamity, then one should blame none but himself. And doing and, and, and if one and so should keep himself busy from blaming others who hurt him. And if one is harmed in his wealth, then he should thoroughly prepare himself for perseverance if his wealth is harmed. This is because reclaiming one's portion in wealth is bitterer than observing patience. For, for one who cannot observe patience with midday heat, rain, and snow, along with the roughness of journeys and the highway robbers, he cannot pursue a career in business. This is something commonly known amongst people that the one who sincerely seeks something, his patience over attaining that thing is recompensed for in accordance with the level of his sincerity. Whoever who really wants something, he goes after it. He doesn't say it's too hard. And when somebody really wants something, when he's met with an obstacle, what does he do? He works on it. He's patient with the obstacle so that he can get by it. And then he goes forward. He's patient. One should remember Allah's presence with him upon observing patience as well as Allah's love for and pleasure with him during patience. Wherever Allah is with, he averts from him the various types of harms and troubles, which otherwise could not be removed by any one of his creation. Allah has said, observe patience. وَاسْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَا صَابِرِينَ وَاللَّهُ Allah has said, observe patience. 
for Allah is surely with the patient ones. He Allah has also said, and Allah, Allah, Allah loves the patient ones. So I'm going to stop here, Barakallah Fikum. A reminder for myself and for you. In the law, ma'asabirin. That is patience upon the things that harm us, that cause pain to us. If it's done by Bani Adam, we have to really consider how we're going to approach resolving it within ourselves, Barakallah Fikum. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shahadu wa nalina anta astaghfirullah wa tubi ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.